this video is going to be about the real life melee weapons that are featured in Mordhau. So if you haven't played it, Mordhau is a very good sort of first person slasher, I guess you want to call it that. Um, medieval, medieval warfare game. Now there's catapults and bows and crossbows and all things like that in it as well. But what I thought I'd focus on in this video is some of the real life melee weapons that are included in Mordhau. And because I've got quite a few medieval armaments, uh, reproduction ones, we could go over a load of these. So I'm going to start with the sidearms, the smaller weapons, and then I'm going to move on to the bigger things behind me. So um, let's start off with a war axe. Now, one thing Mordhau gets correct is that lots of war axes actually had quite small heads. Now, in typical fantasy sort of medieval things, war axes have two massive heads on each side, um, you know, or something like that, or they look like fire axes, where you know, in reality, most combat axes were made to have relatively small heads and short handles. Some would have had longer handles, of course, depending on what their role was for. But the idea is that you don't want something that's going to tire you if you're swinging it non-stop. So an axe like this is perfect, because obviously you can swing it for quite a while. It will do a very brutal job if it hits a person, which is obviously intended to do. But it's not going to tire the wearer out very fast. So war axes were a pretty common sidearm in lots of medieval battles simply because it was very simple for somebody to know how to use an axe because obviously if you did any chopping of trees or wood you'd have the right muscles and the skills to use an axe so if you're swinging it against people it's going to be equally as effective. Now obviously an axe is going to work best if somebody's not really got any armour on but against an armoured opponent or a light armoured opponent, an axe is going to be incredibly brutal. And even then, against somebody of heavy armour on, an axe being swung into their helmet or something similar is going to cause massive head injuries and, you know, trauma and things like that. So an axe is certainly a good choice from a medieval warfare perspective. But speaking of armour, let's look at something far more effective against armour. A mace. Now, in um, Mordhau, the mace you get is a Morning Star variant by default. Um, but this is a flanged mace, but basically um, how this works is obviously it's essentially a club and it has flanges on the side which are kind of like spiked ribs and the idea is that they maximise the force going into it. Now blunt force trauma is obviously incredibly effective against people wearing helmets because obviously if um, that hits you in the head even with a helmet on even if it doesn't get through the helmet, it's going to cause damage to bones and muscles, as well as, you know, concussion and everything like that. But generally, these are very effective at caving in helmets and the person's head underneath a helmet. And obviously, if it hits you in the head and you've not got a helmet on, you're even worse off. So, maces were very good sidearms for use against um, people wearing helmets or heavy armour. Now, there are also warhammers. Unfortunately, I don't actually have any warhammers in my collection, but again, warhammers were just as effective as maces. Often they came with two kinds of heads, as seen in Mordhau. You'd have one side with the hammer style head, which would be designed for bludgeoning, and then on the other side you'd have a spike, and the spike was designed for trying to pierce armour. You know, so you had a two pronged weapon, and depending on what you decided you wanted to do with it, you'd use each side, you know, you'd grip it on one side and then either swing the hammer side or you'd swing the spike side, and either side would give somebody a very nasty day if it hit them. So, that's those. Now let's move on to swords. So, what I really liked about Mordhau is they included the falchion in it. Now, falchions are very common European side swords for sort of a few centuries, and what falchions were designed for was cleaving. Now, there's a lot of different falchion designs. My one is a late style English falchion, which is turning into something called a back sword at this point. Um, but the falchions seen in Mordhau are the more bigger cleaver like blades, but that's totally correct. And basically, falchions are designed for the most part to be short swords. They're like a proper, you know, a proper sidearm sword. The idea is that it's a sword that people without massive training in swords can use because it's more of a cleaver than a pure sword. But most falchions would have also had a point as well as a cutting blade. So the idea is that you can both thrust with it and you can cut with it. Now, one of the things I do like in Mordhau is that the falchion has quite a short blade, as is typical of most falchions. There obviously were falchions built with longer blades. But in Mordhau, they make the distinction that the Mesa has the long blade, the falchion has the short blade, and that's completely fine from a gameplay perspective. In reality, a Mesa is just the German word for knife. Um, so you had the Gross Messer, the big knife, basically, or the Krieg Messer, the war knife. And they were the um, sort of knife swords that were the longer ones. But you know, it's completely fine from a gameplay perspective that the short one's the falchion, 
and the Messer's the big one, um, where in reality you could have falchions or Messer's of either length. The only difference is the falchion is constructed like a sword with a proper pommel and everything. The Messer was basically a big knife. I'm not going to go into all the reasons why in this video, but that's how they did that. So, that's the falchion. Now, the most common kind of, one of the most common kind of swords anyway on the medieval battlefield for a long time was the arming sword. Now, the arming sword is basically a traditional style sword, but it's shorter um, than a long sword. It's also designed to be used one-handed. Now, arming swords are basically what you'd think of when you think of a medieval sword, just they're shorter than long swords. The idea is you've got a stabbing point on it and two chopping edges. Um, again, swords are basically sidearms. A lot of medieval fantasy stuff gets this wrong, where people consider swords to be a primary weapon. However, the thing is, swords were only really effective against unarmored targets. Sure, you could hit people with the pommel, and the cross guard and things like that, and you could ram it through an eye slip. Um, but for the most part, you'd use swords against people with no armor or light armor because they were designed for thrusting and cutting. Generally, swords are a sidearm. Now, there's a much later style of sword that's in Mordhau, which I also happen to have, and that's the rapier, and I've even got a sort of similar basket hilt to the one in Mordhau. And rapiers are primarily thrusting swords. Now, with military-style rapiers, you can cut with them, because they do have, you know, a sword-style blade. They're similar to long swords in that regard. However, how um, a rapier is constructed, it's much harder to chop with it effectively. Because it's a long sword, you don't have that fine sort of control. The idea of a rapier is it's very easy to get the point to go where you want it to. So the idea of a rapier is, like the S-Stock, it's a sword designed for thrusting because it's got a long reach. So it means if somebody had one of the shorter swords, like a falchion or a mounting sword, you can thrust at them and stay well clear of them using footwork and thrust them with the blade. So I was very pleased to see that Mordhau had all these different kind of sidearms in it. But now let's go on to the big meatier things, the pole arms. Because in a medieval battlefield, the pole arms are actually far more common. Um, but most games and films exclude pole arms, sadly. But what I really like with Mordhau is that pole arms have their proper place on the medieval battlefield. So let's go into them now. Right, let's start with probably the most common pole arm throughout history, the spear. Now this is a short spear because I've mounted it on a broom handle. But it's a classic European uh, leaf style spearhead. And <clears throat> this is, as you would imagine, for thrusting. It's very easy to thrust a spear. I don't have enough room to really do it around the camera very well, but the idea is a spear is super easy to thrust, and it's very effective at what it does. Now, most European spears, except for later models, didn't have sharp sides. It's only the point that's sharp, so it's purely for thrusting. And I think in Mordhau, if you hit people with the spear, it does very minor damage, but thrusting is what does the main damage. So that's pretty much correct. Now, there were variants of spear made, which also had cutting edges to them, but again, with a weapon of this size, thrusting is going to be your main objective of it. Now, the reason spears were so common on medieval, medieval battlefields and battlefields of a lot of history is they're incredibly cheap and easy to make, um, and it's also very easy to train somebody to use a spear. If you pick one up, within five minutes you can get a good idea of how to thrust it accurately. Now, Again, spears make sense because you can keep cavalry at bay with them if you have one with a long enough pole. Lots of men in formation can use spears against other men in formation effectively. Um, they're all round very good weapons. So, you know, it's nice that spears are effective in Mordhau because they were effective in real life. One of the problems people seem to find with a lot of video games and things like that is that they assume that you know, if a weapon doesn't look cool or something like that or it's mass produced it wasn't effective, you know, like well, a sword is cooler than a spear, so therefore swords would have been more effective on the battlefield. Well, not really. Um, and that's one of the things I like about Mordhau, is most of the weapons in it are effective. And, you know, some weapons are more effective against lightly armoured or unarmoured opponents, and some of them are more effective against heavily armoured opponents. But now let's look at some of the really nasty pole arms that medieval Europe came up with. And this is my favourite. It's called the Billhook. Now, I'm really glad they put this in Mordhau, because the Billhook is my favourite of the European pole arms. And sadly, most things don't include it, because in England we seem to get forgotten with our pole arm of choice. Now, the bill hook is developed from the agricultural bill, and it basically, as a military bill, it has a spike on it that's designed for thrusting. So again, you can use this bit like a spear. You can shove it into people. But you've also got a reverse and the front spike. So this is your cutting side. This is basically works like an axe. Um, so you bring this down on an opponent, and it cleaves them apart, because obviously it's a big chopping axe. 
in a sense. Now, I did a video where I cut down ivy in my garden using this pole arm, and it was bloody effective. Um, if you know how hard it is to chop through ivy, um, this bill hook made really short work of it. Um, this one was made by Richard Weaponsmith, and so was the glaive, so please check out his channel if you're interested in getting sort of stuff commissioned. Um, he did both of these for me, £50 each, um, and I was really happy with that. And you've also got the reverse spike on these, which is basically designed for pulling riders out of the saddle on horseback. So if a, you know, a cavalry guy rides past you, you get this and you pull them down. Or you can swing this as a spike against armour, you know, like overhead or whatever. And that, again, is very good, like we were saying with all hands earlier, at piercing through armour. So bill hooks and other kinds of pole arms are very versatile, because you have the stabbing side, essentially, at the top and the reverse spike that can be used for stabbing, and the main cleaving side. So you're covered against light and heavy infantry, basically. Doesn't matter if they've got armour or not, you can kill them with this. And the idea is, as well, they work like spears in formation. So you generally see in later medieval battlefields, the spear is getting replaced a lot by pole arms like this, because while they are slightly more expensive to produce, and not, um, not too much more expensive to produce, it doesn't take much more time to train men to use these, but they are a bit more versatile because they've got different edges that can be used for different things. Of course, that does come at the caveat that, you know, for purely thrusting, a spear is better because it's lighter and faster to thrust. And one thing Mordhau does get correct, which is very interesting, is say I was to thrust this in an enclosed space, the spikes on the bill can get caught on walls where the spear won't. So that is something Mordhau does that I've seen very few games get correct. You know, the um, let's say the reverse spike, if I thrust too close to a wall, that could get caught on the wall and stop it being effective. So yeah, well done to Mordhau for getting that correct as well. Right, this is a pole arm that's not strictly in Mordhau, but there are some very similar ones. This is a glaive, and this is a glaive Richard did for me without the reverse spike on it, because I wanted one without the reverse spike, just as a purely thrusting and chopping pole arm. So again, it's literally like a big kind of war scythe or pole axe that you know can be swung down and also you can thrust with it. Now there is the Bardiche in um, Mordhau, and one of the skins you can choose for the Bardiche um, does look quite similar to the Glaive, just, you know, the socket's a bit different. But essentially, this is just a purely thrusting and chopping pole arm. This one hasn't got any clever spikes on it, it doesn't need it. What this is designed for is to, you know, just literally chop off limbs, chop off heads, and, um, you know, thrust into people. Again, weight-wise, um, this comes in somewhere between a spear and a bill hook, or a halberd. So, you know, you've got this nice compromise of this. It's, um, you know, easier to thrust than the bill hook for longer periods because it's lighter. Um, you can chop with it pretty effectively still because it's a good weight for chopping. Um, but, you know, it would have cost less resources to make one of these than a bill hook, so, you know, in terms of logistics. Now let's go on to my really big bad boy. Um, who I won't be able to show in frame very well, but here is a halberd. So um, I'll just get that down there because of how long the pole is. So halberds, um, similar to the bill hooks and everything, um, medieval pole arm of choice for lots of nations. You've got your thrusting spike at the top, the reverse spike, or the bit to pull the rider from the saddle, and you've got your big axe blade there for swinging onto people. In Mordhau, the um, halberd is one of the longest pole arms in the game, which gives you a good reach advantage, and it also does lots of damage. However, it's quite slow to swing and thrust, so that's the caveat to it. Now, out of all the pole arms I've got, I've got the longest pole on this one, as you could have seen from the video. Um, the sort of four to five foot length pole I find with a pole arm that I've got on the bill hook and the glaive is probably perfect for somebody of my height of just under six feet. However, a really tall person might benefit with a longer pole. Of course, longer po the advantage of a longer pole is more reach, better for use against cavalry. However, the disadvantage is it's heavier and more awkward to carry. It costs more to produce longer pole arms and shorter pole arms in terms of pole length. So, you know, there's, there's pros and cons to all these weapons, which is what I like with Mordhau, that they actually factor that in. You know, it's not like you get one pole arm that's faster to thrust and does more damage than all the others. No, there's pros and cons to all of these. But anyway, hope you've enjoyed the video. Um, and maybe you'll learn something about real medieval weapons, because medieval weapons are very cool and brutal. Um, and as I said, Richard Weaponsmith made these two pole arms there. So um, if you're interested in getting something built by him, he does swords and pole arms and things like that, so give him a shout, or just check out his YouTube videos. But thanks for watching.